everybody and welcome to this week's Facebook Live. My name is Deborah Byrne from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services, known across social media as DB Psychology. And today I thought I'd give some sort of an insight into anger and aggression and teens and, and uh, what goes on there. So the first thing I really want to highlight is, is brain development. And, you know, we're all t very familiar with um, how the physiological changes take place in terms of the body and how we develop during puberty and the teen years. But we have to remember that also that the brain is also developing and doesn't fully develop until um, about 26 or 27. In fact, it's much slower than the actual physical body. Um, and as such, um, teenagers um, don't have the capacity to regulate the uh, their emotions as well as adults do. They just don't have that um, ability to stop and think before they maybe, you know, express. And it doesn't necessarily have to be anger. It could be uh, sadness or laughter. It can be anything, any sort of emotion at all will be um can go extreme you know it can be quite wild sometimes um we have to remember that the uh, amygdala is what produces the emotions and until their brain fully develops and the prefrontal cortex fully develops which helps us regulate that kind of emotion they're at the mercy of this lizard brain and the fight flight or fright response is also produced by this part of the brain so basically it's like survival mode um so you have this this child which is growing into an adult and appears maybe to be an adult um but their ability to emotional emotionally regulate is very slim and it's as i said it's not just with anger it can be with any emotion now you know, we can also look at ang at, at, as adults um, how well are we as adults able to regulate our anger? Um, I am sure people know of, of um, you know, people suddenly going blank or, you know, the red haze coming over their eyes and then they lash out. They either lash out verbally or they lash out, unfortunately, physically. That can happen even with adults who have fully functioning, developed brains. Um, so take that aspect of that development out and you have a teenage brain and we can see perhaps that, you know, they're not as well able as us as adults and we're not giving them enough, um, I suppose, credit that this is happening to them, that they aren't able to do this. Now, that's not an excuse for bad behaviour, okay? I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to give you some idea of what's going on in the brain itself. Um... The children and teens need regular, consistent, you know, uh, rules and regulations that they can they can learn and live by. Um, and that's how we've all done it. And that's how we've learned to live in society. Um, so and I will address that during during what I'm talking about this morning. But, you know, be aware that their brains aren't fully developed is what I'm saying to you there. Now, if at any stage you as a parent feel there is something going on here that my child is becoming angry and aggressive then i would say you know get professional help immediately always 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 and i always say this to parents trust your gut instinct you know your child best therefore if you feel no i need professional help here i need maybe talk to the gp or i need to reach out to a counselor um or a child psychologist then please do so don't ever wait with a child or a teen get in there um, you know as quickly as possible because you know recovery is quite good um the tools and mechanisms that they need um are simple enough in terms of anger management and they can be you know underlying anything that's underlying and that's what i'm going to talk about now is what is underlying and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to see what's underlying and investigate as parents what is really going on here because a child doesn't just get angry and become very aggressive for no reason nobody does so we want to you know look at what's underneath it um and uh, what's happening there so you have to be a bit of an investigator and in in saying that so why or what could be generally the causes of a child getting very angry and, and being quite aggressive 
Um, any type of abuse, neglect, anything like that. Um, substance misuse. So if you suspect that at all, um, first off, I always say to parents, don't panic. Reach out and get professional help. They need intervention there. Um, and I also say it's the one time, along with eating disorders or self-harm, bedrooms, privacy is not off limits. It's the one time I say go and investigate what's going on. You might find you know, tablets, um, phones and laptops are not off limits in this case if you suspect that some sort of an it could be leading into an addiction. Um, peer pressure. Um, they could be feeling that, you know, they're not fitting in in school. There could be bullying going on in school. There could be something going on there that you need to find out with friends. Maybe they're breaking up. And that happens a lot. Kids break up. They lose their old friends, maybe from childhood. They've moved into secondary school. And therefore, you know, they're trying to fit in. They're trying to fit in. We all want to feel that, that we, we, we you know, as, as a with our peers, we all want to feel that. And as I said, their emotions are all over the place. So, you know, they, they're going to feel a lot more pressured. Um, and home can be a very safe place and it should be a very safe place. So when they come home, they could be taking that out on you. So if there was something going on with friends or something going on in school, they can be coming home and then taking it out on siblings, um, younger siblings or on you as the parent. Um, divorce, separation and grief. Um, any of those, of course, you know, you'll go through the phase yourself um, if this is happening of anger. Um, so this can be a reason for um, for them lashing out. Um, disabilities. Two reasons on disabilities. One is undiagnosed disabilities. Not all disabilities are visible. We have hidden disabilities. An awful lot of children with hidden disabilities are very intelligent and they can hide the disability and try and cope for a very, very long time. But as they get into the teens, um, the frustration starts to show of trying to cope um, and not understanding that they have a disability and they're not getting correct support, maybe in school and at home, because you don't know that they have a disability. So that could be one reason. The second is some disabilities can come across as being angry. Um, but it's really um, to do with uh, emotional and social difficulties. So the likes of ADHD and autism in particular um, can come across as being a, or seem to be, um, you know, aggressive behaviour when in fact it isn't. Um, so we have to be aware of that. It is also very common for children with uh, disabilities in the late teens and into the early 20s to develop depression and anxiety. So we have to be aware of that. So you can have um, uh, anger and aggression there as well as a result. Mental health conditions, of course, can start in the teen years. So we have to be aware of that. Um, schizophrenia, bipolar and that we have to be aware of that. So we have to um, think as I said, we're investigating what's going on underneath the anger, what's going underneath on underneath the abuse of maybe um, the verbal abuse or a physical abuse that's that they're lashing out at people and um, stressful events. Now we are in the middle of COVID-19 still and you know, we have to be aware that this is a high stressor. As I said, PTSD can be a factor here. Some people may get it and some people may not. Um, and again, anger is um, a part of that. So we have to be aware that maybe that's what's going on. They're frustrated. They're angry um, at what is going on right at this minute in time. It's a very high stressor. Um, so they're just some of um, the reasons why um, children can have um, you know, anger issues, aggressive behaviours um, as teens. Now, the signs, um, I have put the signs, a list of signs in the blog, so you can check that out at www.deborahburnpsychologyservices.com. Um, a word of caution about anger. Not everybody expresses their anger in um, you know a verbally abusive way or a lashing out in a physical way or being loud or so we have to be aware of this um, and some people express it by becoming very quiet and very withdrawn um, and they can go unnoticed unfortunately and they are the ones we really need to be keeping an eye on 
So if you've got one teen in the house who's very verbal and is angry, I would be checking in with the ones that are very quiet and withdrawn and seeing what's going on for them as well. Because the one that's screaming the loudest is getting a lot, can get a lot of attention, but the one that is quiet and withdrawn can get no attention um, and can go under the radar and can, can develop um, you know, the likes of an eating disorder, can develop self-harm, can do, you know, can, there can be an awful lot of problems there that can develop depression, anxiety. Um, so we have to be aware of that, that that is that is something with our child that um, not everybody expresses their anger in, in such a verbal uh, manner. Um, now, as always, if you suspect particularly high stressors, mental health conditions are developing, if there's a family history there and you think that warrants investigation, any sort of disability, of course, um, or any sort of anything to do with substance abuse, eating disorder, self-harm, immediately, as always, as I said, go get help. Um, family therapy may be needed there. It's a good idea um, if you are if you have somebody that has been diagnosed um, with any of those conditions that you also get family therapy or you yourself as a parent get therapy. Um, you'll find that you'll be able to cope better with what is going on at home if you are looking after yourself in that way and getting some therapy. Um, you'll have the support of a therapist so you can actually rant it out. You will need to do that yourself. You know, you will need to cry. You will need to go through all the emotions yourself. And they will also give you some tips and tools that you can help you then, you can bring home with you to use in the situation that you're actually dealing with. Um, so consider that. I would I would suggest that you consider that. Um, of course, when looking at ways to help our children, the first thing, as always, has to be, well, how am I modeling this behavior? How or how is my partner modeling this behavior? How is other family members, maybe, that the children are around modeling this behavior? So how are people around them? Even if it's to somebody, uh, you know, in school, how are they be? How is how is it be our, our friend, family, uh, friend, a friend's parents? How are they modeling their anger? And um, we have to be aware of that. Um, who is in my child's life that could be influencing them and showing them the behavior, how to model anger? So we have to be aware of that. Do I model anger management? Am I using appropriate anger management myself? If not, that's something you will need help with you will need to get um go to a therapist and learn that how to do that stress if somebody's stressed you can get very very frustrated and angry and lash out again not just for yourself you're modeling this stress reducing techniques for your kids as well so what are you doing to model stress reduction what um what are you teaching the children then you're teaching your teens and your children how are you modeling that your stress redu reducing skills what are you doing there and it's always worth investing in anything to do with anger management or stress management is always worth investing some money in or um you know joining a support group to get help with that um i have a group for mums for stress reducing and um, we talk about all sorts of emotions and tips and techniques that you can use to reduce your stress but also we talk about self-care we talk about boundaries um, we're going to be talking about um, creating a calm mind I'm just about to start a module on that an interactive module on meditation so there are plenty there's actually plenty of workshops already in my group and I've leaving I'm leaving a link in the description below if you want to join that if you're a mum number three as always is is vital with any relationship and that is to keep the lines of communication open and particularly with with teens you know you'll get the grunt or as i say the nod that's all you might get is the nod or the whatever um they'll have a phrase and that's all you get sometimes um so you know modeling good communication skills yourself listening more than talking is always important particularly around teens um, so you have to do that, keep the lines of communication open, no matter what. Because remember, they may only be, you know, giving you the grunt or the nod or the whatever, but they are listening and they are watching and they are taking everything that go in, um, everything in around them and what's going on and what is being said and what isn't being said and what isn't being done. They're taking all that in. 
Um, the next thing I would say to you is number four would be to stay calm. Don't engage in a shouting match. Um, you know, let everybody cool down. Um, you know, give both of you, you know, both of you, your, you know, as parents and the teen space to cool down. Now that is not saying you're letting them off the hook. Um, what you're doing is you're everybody's allowed to calm down. Maybe it needs 24 or 48 hours to allow everybody to cool down. Um, and then I would suggest that as a couple, you talk as the parents, you talk together about what's going on. Try and find out, then sit down and talk to the team at that point and find out what's going on. Because as I said, they may be, you know, mouthing off or they may be lashed physically have lashed out and yes they should be punished accordingly for that but allow things to cool down you still need to have the conversation you need to sit down and have a conversation with them and listen first just listen first um an awful lot of uh what they'll say too is if particularly if they're verbal and they're lashing out you know verbally lashing out you'll pick up bits you know, it might be the odd word here or there, but you'll pick up things that they're going to say to you. Um, and you may be able to get a clue. As I said, you need to investigate what's underneath this anger, what's really going on here. Um, and you may be able to pick up a clue as to what's really going on. And then tying in with all that um, would be the consequences. They're going to have to have consequences for bad behavior. As I said, they need consistency. Um, they need you need to understand the why they also need to understand the why of the consequences um, and both parents even if you're living in different homes need to sing off the same hymn sheet and consequences um, should go from your home to if there is another parent's home then their home as well or to a friend's home or to school so what if they misbehave in school, if they misbehave in a friend's home, um, then the consequences are the same. I make the suggestion that you get them involved, particularly once they hit around eight, nine, ten. From then on, that they get involved in making the house rules and the consequences. Kids are brilliant at coming up with consequences that are more relevant to them than you will come up with. So it is worthwhile maybe sitting down and saying, OK, we're going to talk about the house rules. These are our rules in the house. They apply to outside. What should be the consequences if you break them and talk to them? You know, have a conversation. It won't be a one off conversation. It'll be an evolving conversation because different things will matter as they grow older. So as I said, you're looking for um, patterns. You're looking for the underlying, you know, what's going on here. So what behavior am I seeing here? What's really going on? How am I reacting? As the parent, I have to look at what, what am I, how am I reacting to all this? Um, you know, what could be underneath it all? And sometimes with anger, it's fear. So we have to be aware of that. They're afraid that something is going, they're going to lose something. They could be afraid they are losing something. They could be afraid of somebody. Um, so we have to m maybe help them understand that they may not be able to express, you know, that fear appropriately and it's coming out as anger and aggression. And the last point I'd say would be to talk to the school. It is vital that you do that. Now, for two reasons. One, as I said, there could be something going on in school that you're not aware of and also talk to parents of their friends as well there could be something going on there that has made them feel unsafe um it'll also help maybe um if when you're talking to the school get the school on board um so they could access counseling services through the school but it might also kind of cut off maybe more severe consequences like suspensions and expulsion um, if their behavior is, uh, in, is involved in the school, if something's going on in, in the school. So if you're talking to school and you're communicating with the principal or their year head in, um, in school, then it might help, you know, cut down on those you know, stages being ratcheted up and the child eventually being expo expelled from school. So we want to avoid that. We want to avoid um, those kind of consequences there. 
um, we want them in fact to be getting help so the can you know there can be counseling services available through the school as well and through your gp so don't rule that out so that's it for today um if anybody has any questions as always um, i'm available to talk to you you just have to pop a question in the um, description below just tag me um deborah byrne and i will um come back to you as best i can and um, if it's a private matter um you know the mums in my group have that option of private messaging me and um, so if you do want to join the group i have a link as i said in the description below um and i will talk to you all again next week thank you as always to deirdre for tuning in and to everybody else thank you very much because i know there's quite a lot of people actually watch these videos um in replay in particular thank you for watching and i will talk to you all again next saturday morning thank you